Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you've seen, you know, quite a few of my videos here and there, you would pick up that I am not a very religious person. I'm pretty atheistic, secular, um, non-believer, disbeliever, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I don't believe in the concept of a god that created everything, all that kind of stuff. So with that, I've made a lot of videos talking about my moral anti-realist positions, which if you didn't know, moral anti-realism is basically, I guess in layman's terms, you can just say there is no objective morality, essentially. I, I would agree that at best, morality is subjective. And I have made a video on subjective morality. If you want to check that out, I'm sure you can easily find it through my channel. But um, anyway... There might be a lot of stereotypes because everything has stereotypes, right? And if you are a secular kind of person, a lot of religious people might have this notion that, oh, you don't have morals, blah, blah, blah. And I'm fully aware that I might not be helping with the erasure of that if you're the kind of secular person that does have some sort of issue with that. I mean, I don't believe that morals are inherently a thing. I even made a video on moral nihilism as well. And I've been thinking of perhaps doing a video on quasi-realism. I still need to think about that a bit more. And maybe I'll feel more confident in making a video about that. Because what the little that I know about like quasi-realism is basically, okay, sure, we act as though we can have morals even though we can't. And that's why I would say I'm at a crossroads between the whole like subjective, subjective nature, the subjectivity in morality as I perceive it versus the basically non-existence of morality, which basically you would get moral nihilism. So this is not to contribute to any of that, just in case any of you fucking, you know, like theistic people are like, jumping up and down to get your confirmation that like, oh my gosh, these non-religious people are just our enemies or whatever. So the reason that I'm mentioning all of this is because this is perhaps the, you know, one-off video that I might be coming off, coming after people such as myself in the atheistic, you know, sort of like secular lane. But I think it has to be said because as a committed moral anti-realist, I do not believe that evolutionary ethics still give you an objective standard of morality, at least not in the meta-ethical, you know, confines that people want to use it, secular people want to use it instead of having to, you know, denounce to believing in a God for quote-unquote objective standards of, you know, morality. So this is, yeah, like, like what I said, this is the one-off video where I'm going to be coming after my own kind, so to speak. But I think, um, if you ask me as a committed moral anti-realist, everybody just has to bite the bullet. Nothing can objectively prove any form of objective morality in the slightest. Not even nature, not even, you know, biology and everything like that in and of itself. So I think, first of all, I just wanted to say, and this is not me giving leeway to any, you know, religious people like whatsoever, um, as a moral anti-realist, even outside the conversation of God and like stuff like that, I think we all just have to bite the bullet that basically, well, if you ask me, I think morals just come from like, you know, a sense of entitlement. I mean, I am a determinist, so I believe that we're determined to uphold whatever kind of values and morality, whatever you want to call it, basically that's, you know, instilled through our, you know, nature. And okay, see, this is the issue that I have with evolutionary ethics. I don't necessarily think it's wrong in the sense that I don't see where its foundation, you know, comes from. I am pretty much a very naturalist kind of person, physicalist kind of person, materialist kind of person, like whatever you want to call it. Like, okay, I would strictly just define at least the way I'm using those terms as I do not believe in anything more than the physical. I do not believe in supernatural elements or properties. I believe that this is a physical, material kind of existence that, you know, we deal with. So I understand how smooth it sounds for a lot of like secular people to say that okay, we don't need God for morality because it's just hardwired, you know, in our biology in order to care about other people. There's such a thing as like empathy. And even if you don't have empathy, you can also use something as, you know, cognitive empathy to, you know, logically deduce, at least I believe that's the, like the, the best possible way you can logically know what to do morally if you don't have the, you know, emotional like empathy that a lot a lot of people might just have naturally i do very much excel i believe in cognitive empathy more than emotional empathy because 
I do struggle with empathy, admittedly. I am a diagnosed narcissist, and I believe I made a video a long time ago about it, about like lack of empathy or whatever. So you can double check that video if you're interested in that in terms of how it relates to my worldview, I guess. I haven't even seen that video in a while, but I believe more or less it should be okay, more or less like what I'm saying. But um, yes, I agree that evolutionarily we needed to care about other people to at least, you know, like get this far because, you know, the prosperation, is that a word? The, is the prosper of our species to reach this far is obviously mothers taking care of their children, maintaining them, sustaining them as much as possible, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, stuff like that. But just because it's natural why does that actually mean it's a good thing? And I think this very much appeals to, you know, the appeal to nature fallacy, which if I'm understanding correctly, I'll just quickly explain as something that's basically um, something is not inherently good or bad just because it's natural. And I'm still going to come after religious people in this video as well, despite saying that I'm, you know, saying that this video might also be something that is, you know, against the other secular people such as myself. But basically, okay, if we understand appeal to nature fallacy, something is not good or bad just because it is quote unquote natural. There's such a thing as natural disasters. And it's literally in the definition. It's a natural disaster. I don't think a lot of people would consider that, you know, a good thing. Or poison ivy is natural, but I don't think you want to come into contact with that, blah, 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 and, you know, stuff like that. So you might say that it's natural to care about other people. And I think this is what evolutionary ethics tries to explain. But I think if you're using this as a catalyst to explain that, like, okay, therefore we have objective morality, that's only one side of the entirety of what's natural morally. So if you agree that everything is natural, everything is physical, which I am very much in agreement with, I don't disagree with that, then I think in order to be consistent, you would also have to agree that things that are considered immoral are also natural. So killing somebody is natural. Um, giving somebody a warm, welcoming hug, you know, is natural. But your prescription on whether or not both of those things are good or bad, you know, are exactly that a prescription. There, there's no running away from either of these situations being natural. I'm sure you would prefer a, you know, warm, welcoming hug from somebody that cares about you versus somebody that wants to like, you know, murder you, let's say, oh, love feels good because of oxytocin. Like if you hug somebody and you both care about each other, it's going to release, you know, oxytocin and it's going to be, you know, a welcoming, you know, sort of thing. But so is pain. So is, um, you know, basically anything emotional. It's all natural and it's all, you know, in our minds. So this does not separate it from being something that is somehow high up there. And it's kind of funny because at least as, you know, non-religious people, as more like secular people, we, you know, like to believe that we can explain things without grounding it in God, without grounding it in like some sort of like super natural or whatever. But I don't think a lot of people who are secular that use evolutionary ethics as a kind of way to like explain, okay, the quote unquote objectivity of morals, they don't realize that they're still using the same thing as a religious person does when they say, oh, how can you not believe in a creator? And that's what also what I'll come after religious people for, and rightfully so. Like, how can you not believe in a God? There's a beautiful sunset. There's a there's a beautiful rainbow. And then, okay, let's say in contrast to a natural disaster, are you going to call that beautiful? I don't think you would. But I guess some like religious people will say that, oh, if there's a natural disaster, you know, it's God's wrath and maybe we would deserve it from you. Like, whatever, this is a separate conversation. I really want to make this focused on, yes, kind of like what I said, evolutionary ethics. But like, okay, so if you are a secular person, you understand that natural means are not immediately, you know, good or good or bad. So why would you follow the same route as a religious person that will say, oh, there's such beautiful design in things that are only considered good, but they're not going to bring up the things that are also natural, but considered bad, at least in our purview, let's say like, like poison ivy, or, you know, again, murdering somebody is, is natural. Does it make sense for me to call that good? It, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but it's, it's still natural. So like you can easily see the flaw, you know, in this logic. And also, yes, just to call out the religious people, like even further, um, if you have something against naturalism and materialism, then why are you using any aspect of it to like boost, you know, your belief in God to like get people to be convinced to, you know, believe in God? Because, okay, 
you're you're picking and choosing what is natural to like you know quote unquote like suit your agenda or whatever but i think me as a naturalist as a materialist as a physicalist as somebody that does not believe in anything beyond the you know i guess just physical nature of like let's say um reality all things that i call good or bad are natural are natural if you want to prove that there is something beyond this and you know that's the thing that you should be considering good because again why do you get to pick and choose between what is good natural or not and then just like roll with it because it's like it somehow happens to be con convenient for like whatever your worldview is but then in other times oh no naturalism materialism is you know quote unquote like so you know depressing and then let's say the inverse you as a secular person will explain that okay everything is just um you know, made of, like, natural sort of, like, uh, physical sort of, like, stuff, and then immediately use that sort of thing to say, oh, I prefer this in the natural, therefore it proves that, um, okay, we have something, quote-unquote, like, objective, like, no, we don't. Like, all of morality is still an arbitrary prescription of whatever is good or bad to you. It is not founded anywhere in existence. It's founded in your head, maybe, let's say that. But then, again, that's just where, like, the ultimate bias leads, and that's why I'm a moral anti-realist, because it does not inherently exist anywhere. There's nothing you can test to find morality. It is always projected over and over again, and I don't think anyone can make an argument against that. So to, like, wrap this all up overall, so basically God, I believe, does not give objective morals, and nature itself also does not give objective morals Nature, I agree, is something that counts as more of an is than an ought. So it cannot be applied to morality. So there you go.